Philippine Nurses, Licensure Examination, Nursing Practice 1, Community Health Nursing, Master Your Community Health Nursing. Let's start. Scenario. Mr. Reyes, a newly assigned nurse in the triage area, is assessing Mrs. Santos, a patient who arrives with an acute asthma exacerbation. Mrs. Santos is experiencing severe shortness of breath with a respiratory rate of 38 breaths per minute. She is using accessory muscles to breathe and her oxygen saturation is 88%. Mr. Reyes is ordered to administer a subcutaneous injection of 0.3 mg epinephrine to Mrs. Santos to relieve her respiratory distress. Question number one. What should be Mr. Reyes's first action before administering the epinephrine to Mrs. Santos? A. Administer the epinephrine immediately to relieve the patient's symptoms. B. Confirm the correct dose and route with the provider's order. C. Check Mrs. Santos' blood pressure and pulse rate. D. Instruct Mrs. Santos to try deep breathing exercises. Correct answer. B. Confirm the correct dose and route with the provider's order. Explanation Before administering any medication, it is crucial to follow the five rights of medication administration. Right patient, right medication, right dose, right route, and right time. Confirming the correct dose and route ensures safe administration of the ordered epinephrine. Although checking vital signs is important, the priority is to verify the medication order for accuracy. Question number two. Mr. Reyes notices Mrs. Santos' oxygen saturation is 88%. Which of the following interventions is most appropriate in addition to administering epinephrine? A. Place her in a supine position. B. Provide supplemental oxygen. C. Encourage her to walk to relieve anxiety. D. Restrict her fluid intake. Correct answer. B. Provide supplemental oxygen. Explanation. An oxygen saturation level of 88% is low, indicating hypoxia. Providing supplemental oxygen will help improve Mrs. Santos' oxygen levels and reduce respiratory distress. A supine position can worsen breathing difficulty and asthma, walking is not appropriate during an asthma exacerbation, and restricting fluids is not relevant to her respiratory needs. Question number three. After administering the epinephrine, which of the following side effects should Mr. Reyes closely monitor for in Mrs. Santos? A. Bradycardia. B. Hypotension. C. Tachycardia. D. Hypoglycemia. Correct answer. C. Tachycardia. Explanation. Epinephrine can stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which may cause an increase in heart rate, tachycardia. Other common side effects include palpitations and possible hypertension. Hypoglycemia and bradycardia are not expected side effects of epinephrine. Question number four. Which of the following signs would indicate that the epinephrine administration was effective for Mrs. Santos? A. Her respiratory rate decreases to 20 breaths per minute and she is breathing more easily. B. She begins coughing frequently after the injection. C. Her skin becomes pale and clammy. D. Her oxygen saturation drops to 85%. Correct answer. A. Her respiratory rate decreases to 20 breaths per minute, and she is breathing more easily. Explanation. A reduction in respiratory rate and easier breathing are indicators that the epinephrine is working, as it helps to relieve airway constriction and asthma attacks. The other options indicate worsening symptoms or side effects rather than improvement. Question number five. If Mrs. Santos does not respond to the initial epinephrine injection, what should Mr. Reyes anticipate as the next step in her care? A. Increase the dose of epinephrine immediately. B. Notify the healthcare provider for further instructions. C. Discharge the patient after a short observation period. D. Wait another 30 minutes before assessing her again. Correct answer. 
B. Notify the healthcare provider for further instructions. Explanation If Mrs. Santos does not respond to the initial dose of epinephrine, Mr. Reyes should notify the healthcare provider for further guidance. Adjusting the dose without a provider's direction could lead to adverse effects, and discharging her would be unsafe without adequate symptom relief. Prompt action is required to prevent her condition from worsening. Scenario Sarah, a nurse interested in integrative health practices, wants to conduct a study on the impact of guided imagery and aromatherapy on patient anxiety and pain management. She believes that these complementary therapies could enhance patient well-being. Sarah plans to review related literature, design her study carefully, and ensure ethical standards are met, including protecting patient rights. Question number six. Sarah wants to assess the effectiveness of guided imagery and aromatherapy on patient outcomes. The type of research best suited for her study is A. Observational research B. Experimental research C. Qualitative research D. Case study Correct answer B. Experimental research Explanation. Experimental research is ideal because it allows Sarah to apply specific interventions, guided imagery and aromatherapy, and measure their impact on patient anxiety and pain levels. This type of research design helps establish cause and effect relationships, which are necessary to demonstrate the effectiveness of the therapies. Question number seven. Sarah is focusing on a research design that allows her to observe patients' experiences with guided imagery and aromatherapy without altering any variables. This type of design is known as A. Experimental design B. Longitudinal design C. Non-experimental design D. Cohort design Correct answer C. Non-experimental design Explanation. Non-experimental design allows researchers to observe and analyze phenomena as they naturally occur without manipulating variables. This approach is often used to gather descriptive information or identify relationships between variables without intervention. Question number eight. Sarah's study has the potential to contribute to nursing because it A. Provides data on the safety of conventional treatments. B. Validates the effectiveness of traditional medical practices. C. Explores complementary therapies that could improve patient well-being. D. Replaces the need for pharmacological treatments. Correct answer. C. Explores complementary therapies that could improve patient well-being. Explanation. Research on therapies like guided imagery and aromatherapy could contribute to nursing by expanding knowledge of non-pharmacological interventions for pain and anxiety management. This aligns with holistic nursing approaches that seek to enhance patient comfort and well-being. Question number nine. To ensure her study is grounded in existing knowledge, Sarah conducts a literature review. The main purpose of this review is to A. Replicate findings of past studies. B. Understand the current evidence base and identify research gaps. C. Collect existing research data to use in her study. D. Prove her research topic is unique. Correct answer. B. Understand the current evidence base and identify research gaps. Explanation. The purpose of a literature review is to establish a theoretical background understand what is already known, and identify gaps or areas lacking research. This allows Sarah to build a study that contributes meaningfully to existing knowledge without replicating prior research unnecessarily. Question number 10. In her study involving human participants, Sarah is committed to ethical standards. Which of the following is not a guaranteed right of her participants? A. Right to informed consent. B. Right to protection from harm. C. Right to choose the outcome of the study. D. Right to confidentiality. Correct answer. C. Right to choose the outcome of the study. 
Explanation Participants have the right to informed consent, confidentiality, and protection from harm. However, they cannot influence or choose the study's outcome. Outcomes should be determined objectively based on data collected, ensuring the research's integrity and validity.